Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey there, guys. Thanks for tuning in once again. Mike Kapler, my name. Joel Brzezinski is with me. That's yes. me. Growing in Grace, the podcast, and Merry Christmas to those who are listening at the proper time. We realize many go back into the archives, but uh, today, Joel and I thought we would uh, just kind of kick back here a little bit and relax, and uh, let's uh, just see where this takes us. We didn't really map anything out here, but we thought we'd just take, as we often do during this time of the year, the Christmas season, sometimes we'll we'll take a program just to um, reflect a little bit, because we do talk a lot about the death and resurrection of Jesus, even the things that happened during the course of his ministry and the results of the finished work, and that's good. We want to continue to do that, but we thought maybe, you know, Christmas is just kind of that different time where we, we kind of, to me, it's a time to reflect, Joel, and and I thought maybe we would do that here today as we um, just kind of think out loud here a little bit about what Jesus means to us and uh, share it with you who are listening today. Yeah, I think it is. This will be this will just be something different. So if you're used to us talking about you now the finished work of Jesus and the grace of God, and all, it, that, that's all about Jesus, of course. But there are some other things that, I don't know, we might just get into. You know, Jesus— being a baby, Jesus being a boy, those were parts of his life that a lot of us don't think about. And and the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about when Jesus was a, a baby or a boy. It does say a little bit, but sometimes we don't think that Jesus grew. He was a baby, and, and he grew, and he learned. The scriptures talk about how he grew in wisdom before God and man, um, and stature, wisdom and stature uh, in front of God and in front of man. So it's not like he started out as a, you know, like when a, when Adam was created, Adam was, I don't know how old Adam was. Well, he was zero, <laughs> but, yeah. but 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 you you picture him as a man. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? He, that's how old he was. He was zero, but um, but Jesus came into the world as a baby. Now Jesus. The Bible says all things were created by him and for him and through him. That's what the scriptures say. And yet he came into the world as a, as a boy, as a baby. It's just awesome what, what God did. He, he, he had the full human experience, I guess you could call it. We come into the world as babies and we grow to a certain age and then we die. Jesus was around 33 when he died and of course a lot happened in the course of his life uh it's just very interesting as we kind of explore uh, some of these things about jesus that we don't necessarily always think about yeah and maybe that's that's kind of a good follow-up from what we've been talking about where the uh, apostle john in his letters was trying to convince people that jesus really did come in the flesh and called on people to believe in that and that's exactly what happened here. I mean, Jesus Christ, the Word, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. John chapter 1. It, 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 it boggles the mind a little bit, Joel, because, I mean, there is so little in there about the childhood of Jesus. We have a little bit about the birth, of course. That's kind of what the whole Christmas scene, the manger scene, is all about, right? So we got that, and then there's just a, a brief look at Jesus around the age of 12 when he went into the temple. And then he became an adult. But the Bible says that he, he grew uh, in wisdom and stature. He grew in it. He didn't just necessarily know everything. He, he grew in it. And uh, I think he, the Bible also says something to the effect that he gained favor with others. And um, with Jesus, I mean, think about this because, I mean, here, here he is as, as a child, as not only as a baby. Obviously, that happened. But then uh, his parents were raising him in, in the Jewish tradition, no doubt. And um, it's probably been a while since we've talked about this, Joel. But, and this is only speculation. It's not in the Bible. So we're, we're just talking here. Um, but it, it's, it's quite possible somewhere along the way when Jesus was growing up that somebody, 
somebody spoke to him about the experience that Mary and Joseph had when she became pregnant. Uh, it's possible that uh, he had, did you hear my dog shake? <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> Hi, Sonny. She, I can tell you she couldn't hear it. But anyway, um, so it's possible somebody communicated to Jesus as a boy um, something about the identity of, of who he was as the son of God with his virgin birth and everything that occurred with that. It's very possible. We don't know, but it's very possible because when, when Jesus got to the wilderness and was tempted by the, the devil, um, he was constantly challenged uh, by Satan on the basis of his identity, uh, being the son of God. Um, and so I just think this is something Jesus probably, as, as a human being, uh, grew into as a boy and, and developed um, with the, the, the help of God's spirit, of course, uh, developed into the, the Jesus that we typically think of and, and know when it comes to his ministry. Yeah, most likely. I mean, all of that. I, he, like um, I was saying, he had the, the full human experience, um, and he, he, part of that is learning. Uh, he had to learn how to talk and walk, and he had to learn who he was. And it's very likely, again, the Bible doesn't say this, but like, I think, like you say, um, his mom, his dad, uh, they probably shared the scriptures with him, and he began to realize who he was. And he, of course, had his heavenly Father the, and the Holy Spirit communicating with him. And I th it, it all, he grew. You know, like we talk about growing in grace. Well, he grew. He grew in grace. He grew as who he was. Now, he didn't become anything more than what he was. He, he, grew, he grew into who he already was. Uh, I think that's interesting. Gap, you were talking about, you mentioned briefly the manger scene, and I wanted to bring up something. <laughs> it's a little, a little different, a little uh, shaking up of things here, perhaps, in some people's minds. Maybe you already know this, but um, I was thinking about the manger scene and, and Jesus when he was born and you know you got these Christmas cards with the manger scene you got Mary and Joseph and the little baby Jesus and the manger and the hay and the straw and the sheep and the lambs and then you've got sometimes some camels and you got three wise men there um, this may come who, who as I believe were Mo, Larry and Curly by the way <laughs> Mo, Larry, and Curly. Yeah, yeah that's their nicknames for whatever <laughs> Eastern names they actually really had, right? <laughs> Wise guys. And and so, but but here's the thing. Well, for one thing, did you know that the Bible never says that there were three wise men? It just says that wise men from the East came to Jerusalem. Doesn't say how many. We just traditionally have always believed three. And but. Were you about to say something? Well, I, heard you take a breath. I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I do remember somebody telling me one time they come from a very traditional background, and their theory was the reason, or maybe they'd been taught, the reason that it's been assumed there were three is because they brought uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh as if they could only carry one gift. Yeah, one gift each. That's, yes, that's, what, the card said. that's what the card <laughs> said. You know, it's either no gifts or one gift each. That's all. <laughs> the first Christmas cards. They said, "Bring only one gift." Anyway, it's, it's uh, <laughs> possible there were there was there were many. Wise it's very men possible because they they typically traveled in in larger groups back then. Right? Yeah, they would have traveled in in large groups. It wasn't just three. If if it was three, it wasn't just three, but it would have been the wise men and a whole bunch of other people that came with them. <laughs> but anyway, it, it also doesn't say that they were actually there at the birth of Jesus. This is interesting to me. Matthew 2, well, Luke 2, of course, you have the, uh, the big Christmas story. And Matthew 2 is where it talks about the wise men coming. They came from the east. Uh, where, is this king, where is he who was born king of the Jews? Uh, we've seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. Uh, Herod was troubled about all this. And anyway, Herod had secretly called the wise men, to determine what time the star appeared, sent them to Bethlehem and said, go carefully search for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him back, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Of course, he was tricking them. Uh, when they heard the king, they departed. And see, this wouldn't have just all happened in one day. This would have happened over a period of time. 
When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Young child was. It doesn't say where the baby Jesus was. It says where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And uh, they, this is when they brought the gold uh, Frankenstein and myrrh. Oh, the gold frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, We're talking my language. The, but they had come into the house. Now, Jesus didn't, wasn't, didn't they come to an inn? It was an inn, and there was no room at the inn. And so, you know, it's a hotel, a motel. And so they had to go to a stable, and he was born, and they laid him in a manger. Nothing about a house. And so here we come to a time when Jesus is actually in a house. A young child is in the house. And now we read a little bit further down in this uh, chapter. And this is when Herod, if you remember the story, he had, and I'm taking too long for this, so I'll hurry up because we only got a couple minutes left. But Herod, when he was, saw that he was deceived by the wise men, he sent them and he, he had, after they had left, he had all the male children two years and younger killed. Herod sent for the male children two years and younger to be killed. Why would he do two years and younger? Well, it's because all this time had passed, and uh, Jesus was was now probably around two years old. Anyway, I just thought that was uh, interesting. I like it when we learn something that kind of goes against tradition. Not that that's a real big deal, but it does sort of signal to us sometimes when you think about it, some of the things that we uh, assume to be true may not really always be true, like with the manger scene. I mean, I guess today we would say that the three wise men photobombed the manger scene, right? Yeah, (laughs) they got photoshopped in. (laughs) Yes, back to the future. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's right. There's the DeLorean in the picture there somewhere. How did we get here? We're not supposed to show up for a couple years. (laughs) Yeah, so whatever Christmas means to you, I I hope as time goes on, it will mean the accomplishment of Jesus Christ in your life. You see, because your life, as a believer in Jesus Christ, your life is his life in you. That's it now. I mean, your life was kind of put over on the shelf. It was, you you know, you were killed. You know, your your life that was born in Adam and, and... encountered sin through that has has been taken away and you've been given eternal life now and that that eternal life that that means something that really had no beginning it, it's a, a life that has always been it's the very life of god that now abides in us and so from all of us <laughs> here at the uh, growing in grace podcast we'd like to wish you and your family a, a merry christmas and we'll be back after the first of the year with more programs about the good news of Jesus Christ. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.